And hello, good morning everyone. Good to see you, Paul Trani here. Gonna dive into today's Photoshop Masterclass. And just so you know, um, yes, schedules change slightly, but essentially this is gonna be a Photoshop Masterclass and it's gonna alternate with a Design Masterclass. So uh, Photoshop one week, design, so that's more like Illustrator, graphic design type tools, uh, Photoshop, so they're gonna alternate each week. Uh, but join me regardless, and I'm so glad you guys are here. So hello, Biola is here as well. I'm so glad you're here. Rick's here, uh, Steve, Monica, everybody's filing in, saying hello, hello Jan. Cody Bear is in the house. Uh, yeah, M Mon Manali, Manali as well. Cool. Susan Wilson. Good to have you here. I'm so glad you guys joined me. General Co Kenobi is here as well. So again, this is fun. This is just a fun project and it's just um, a good way just to kind of like work on your skills uh, with something that you like to do is this is the short of it, right? Um, and I'll, I'll show you what uh, what I'm talking about. A lot of singing today maybe so really it's all about like sort of picking a band that you like or a group um again this falls in the realm of fan art um but uh you know take a band that you like and say hey you know what i would like to make a cool um cover for their latest album or a poster or just any sort of Instagram sort of graphic. And that's essentially what we're doing. Uh, that does help you get like sort of picked up by all of their fans. You know that for those obvious reasons is why it works. Um, so anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do with this band. You know, again, uh, not that well known, but I'm already digging their graphics already. They're called The Dangerous Summer. Uh, I am not employed by them or anything. In fact, uh, I have to miss their concert next week. Darn it, I had tickets and everything. I even had tickets to this, the Drinkers Club. Uh, darn it. But uh, And I actually have this hoodie. So that's sometimes what you'll see me wear is this hoodie. So we're going to create some cool graphics for this fun band. We're going to be using Photoshop. You guys get the idea. Um, and uh, that's kind of that's what we're going to do. Oh, you're too kind, Michelle. Thank you so much. And if you're joining me elsewhere, I want to say hello as well. I see Barbara over there uh, on YouTube and... Sharab as well. Stony Braswell is in the house. Hello, Stony. All right. So um, uh, this is one thing you can do because if you are going to be using uh, any sort of band's artwork or any group's artwork, they might have a logo. They might have a design. Who knows? You could find that stuff out there. I do want to point out there's a couple different options which you could do just for finding this font. I have this extension called uh, What Font. That's what it's called. It's called, uh, oh, it's called, it should be called What it should be called what the font, but what the font will is a browser extension that just allows me to roll over and say, oh, this is ITC Clearface. That's this font right here. That's what they used. Another thing you can do since this is a Photoshop masterclass, let's exit out of what the font and we will just do a quick screenshot of this right here, the dangerous summer. Boom. We'll jump into Photoshop. We'll drag this into Photoshop. We'll maybe scale it up. Why not? Uh, resolution is kind of high for this file, but right in here, Photoshop ooh, ooh, has the capability, if I can get my screen squared away, to kind of figure out uh, the font or a font that's close to this one, because I the ITC Clearface font is going to cost me money. But since I already have a Creative Cloud, what can I can I find something close? So it's just a matter of selecting that graphic, going down to match font. So from there, I can say match font. It will go through Creative Cloud 15,000 plus fonts and uh, figure out uh, a font that is close. Right here, it says Beloved Sans Bold. Awesome. Go ahead and um, uh, it'll start, you know, sort of loading up multiples, right? Uh, but they all have like a little bit of character to them. Like I like Poppins as well. It's like super clean. Uh, but that's kind of what we have is we have those fonts. We can go ahead. Uh, Beloved is what I might work with, but that's how you can sort of find a font for uh, any project that you're working on. So uh, Helvetica New. Oh, Helvetica New gives your browser the blues. That's a bummer. Helvetica New is awesome because it's a super clean font, but also has like so many alternates um, it's just, it's just really nice to work with. Uh, that's, what's cool about it. So, so many different weights and such. 
All right, so right in here. There we go. Crank it up. Crank it up. Let's do this. Boom, boom. There's Poppins. So Poppins, by the way, did you notice what ha what just happened there? Is I had Poppins selected in my um, match font menu. Since it was selected in my match font menu, that becomes my default font. So when I start typing, I don't even have to remember that it's Poppins. It loads it up and I'm good to go. Right, so that's super cool what we can do. All right, so there that is. The dangerous summer. So it's going to mean danger, but also going to mean fun summer. <laughs> so I like the contrast. Uh, this one is a nice clean font, right? You could always have some fun with a nice clean font like this. Uh, notice all caps are turned on. Um, let's actually compare that with Beloved. So B-L-O-V. There we go. Ooh, do I not have... Maybe I won't worry about it, but also, um, that's also kind of interesting. Ultimately, I'm actually going to go down this road of ha using script or even writing it up myself. The, sorry about that. Let's do this one more time. Turn off all caps. There we go. All right. So again, we're just getting started here in Photoshop. So hello, Emma. Good to have you here. Um, uh, all right, Frank, it's good to see you as well. So we have some fun options right in here. We'll go back to this one, right? We have this, uh, The Dangerous Summer. I like typically sort of taking a, a font and then uh, manipulating it some more, stretching it out, having some fun with it, and that's what we could do uh, in this case. In fact, I'll just go ahead and uh, jump this layer, Command-J, we'll duplicate it, and we'll put these maybe on three different lines. So I'm going to have uh, each... There we go. Each word is going to have its own line. And again, this is nothing too crazy about this, right? Just give me a second. So uh, I, I think, I don't know what you think, Froja and Andreas and everybody, but, you know, one thing that uh, I, I notice a lot of designers do, I know I do this, like, you'll use a basic font and then you'll start manipulating it. So I don't usually pick something out of the box and call it done. Uh, one reason is people can point at that and they can say, oh, that is, um, gosh, what was the font that Olive Garden used? I can't remember. But that's what will, what will happen sometimes is like you're using a font out of the box. People are going to recognize that font. It's like, oh, all you did is type in and use that font. Yeah, that's not a logo. Uh, but this gives us a place to start, right? We have this text. We can start to play with uh, sort of cutting it up or manipulating it as well. I'm going to convert this. Let's jump it. I'm going to convert this to a smart object because that's going to give me the ability to like manipulate this some more. So I can go in and do something what I love to do, which is use liquify. Um, so here we are in liquify mode up at the top forward warp tool by the way I will the reason this is might look a little bit different is I sometimes show the backdrop you can actually show whatever you're working on uh, and the backdrop there uh, if you need to you could always turn that off as well but we'll just jump in here and we can start to like sort of push this stuff around in a major way like so right so again, like that, like it's melting in the sun, who knows, right? There we go. Again, just one idea for uh, this particular design. Since it's a smart object, I could always double click and jump in there because what's bothering you? Reverb Mike, I know you know this, like I was just, I think of you. I, like it got a little funky right up here with the T. We can always reconstruct it using the reconstruct tool. Uh, for certain parts. If it's looking a little funky, just go ahead and reconstruct and then jump back out and we can fix that, you know, that T in that case, right? Pretty straightforward, All right? Let's move on. Uh, today's stream is brought to you by a mocha, uh, mocha coffee <laughs> K-cup. All right. Um, see what just happened there. 
look what just happened. I actually sized that up and it uh, changed the distortion because Liquify doesn't change when you resize the smart object. So what you might need to do is put a smart object inside of another smart object, right? Now they're, the, if the text and the effect are inside of a smart object and I can go ahead and resize it and, um, and play with this some more. So I can have this one offset. Let's do an overlay. I'm gonna get a lot into uh, effects is my plan, so I have uh, you know some cool ideas in mind. But what I want to do is do kind of like a, you know, like I think it'd be cool to do like a cool offset of um, of like different colors. Uh, is the idea? We'll go with purple. We'll go down here to the other end. Maybe uh, maybe yellow. Not to worry, we are just getting started, and thank you so much for joining me. This is a Photoshop Masterclass. is going to be alternating with a Design Masterclass every week, just so you know. And um, I'm so glad you're here. So. There it is. Right, so again, it doesn't look that dangerous yet, because guess what? I'm going to... I'm gonna liquefy this again, because that's how, that's how dangerous I am. What, you're gonna liquefy it again? You're gonna liquefy and then liquefy some more, right? We can take this, let's make sure we're on the sort of the distort part, and we'll push this up, maybe drag this down. We're just offsetting it a little bit. So that's what I did with the yellow. We're gonna do the same thing here for, uh, in fact, I could start naming these if I want to. This is the purple. And then we have the uh, good old yellow, right? So for the purple, we'll do the same thing as we'll go into liquefy and we'll distort this as well. So Faisal, good to have you as well. Thanks for joining me, Faisal. Uh, I didn't get into these other manipulation tools. I encourage you to like peruse them on. Yes, you could twirl, you can pucker, you can bloat. By the way, you could always reverse directions. Hold down the Alt key for any of these. You will twirl it the opposite direction. You can change the pucker tool into the bloat tool just by holding down the Alt key. So just kind of keep that in mind when it comes to manipulating things, right? So there that is, right? S yeah, somewhat cool, S a lot hard to read. Right, so we're gonna, so funny, <laughs> yeah. Not, it's still, it's still not dangerous enough because it's so hard to read, right? And I always say this, like type has one job, it's just to convey information in writing. But you know what, let's actually throw a fun blur in here. So we're gonna get into this, we're gonna get into uh, adding, under blur gallery, we'll do a field blur on text. Yeah, so yes, exactly. Thank you, Cl uh, Clarissa, because at this point, a lot of this stuff, yeah, we could do the same thing in Illustrator. You are 100% correct. Did I do field blur? That's not what I wanted. The nice thing is, even though I'm like, hey, oh, I didn't want field blur, I wanted tilt shift, guess what? It's right over here. This is basically your blur gallery. So right in here, I wanna do tilt shift, turn that on. Remember, I'm dealing with that purple text back there, and we're gonna crank this up a lot. And that's what I want, I want fall off up here, and then I want it to be sharp, and then fall off down here. So we'll just adjust the line like so. So see what I'm doing is I'm blurring out that, uh, that purple. Grab this, pull that down. We're trying to make it look dangerous, huh? Let's crank it up. Yeah. So yeah. And again, this is, this is, I, 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 I call this a poster. Essentially this is uh, going to be mainly an online graphic, but my resolution is, uh, you know, very much a, um, a print sort of resolution, right? So that's what I would do with all of these. Do the purple, do with the yellow. We'll go back into blur gallery, by the way. Um, since I already have that selected, we're doing this now with the uh, yellow text. Hopefully it doesn't get too muddy. but crank it up and maybe we'll give it a little bit of a rotation. So it's gonna blur out some, some different 
parts of these uh, letters. So again, it's doing the yellow. We can see that yellow falling off. Sorry, it's hard to read. Don't worry, it looks kind of ugly right here. I'm hoping this last move really brings it together. The blurry summer sounds about right. So anyways, we'll apply that. And here's where the magic comes from. It's this text, the Okay, we'll do that. We'll go to into blur gallery with this black text. Of course, I don't want to crank it up this much, right? Because we're going to lose all that quality. But we just want to kind of melt out, like have some of the text kind of melt away a little bit. Ugh. That's what happens too. You get impatient because this is a very large file. Uh, it really is. So, um, you know, we'll give it a second. Matthew, welcome. Good having you here. Um, thank you, Brian. You're being too kind to me. Um, ooh, I clicked twice. Oh, interesting. I'm glad this happened. By the way, I clicked twice. So, did anybody catch that? <clears throat> What happened there is I, you're actually able to add as many of these um, smart filters as you want. So I actually added three tilt shifts in one. So yeah, you could be that guy that really does blur out everything. Um, but in this case, again, I'm just doing it on these two sides. It's kind of blurring that out like so, right? And again, if I wanted to blur out this end, I can click and add another one, rotate it, give it a, wait for it, rotate it this way, right? Stretch it out a little bit more, wait for it, zoop, like that, and you get the idea. But again, I was like really into, love the blur gallery, and especially tilt shift. Feels like they're not working well together for some reason. So we'll just go back to this one and uh, we'll just click okay. I, there's more I wanna do, by the way. That's the thing, honestly, like, uh, Tiago, like it's not that, like the initial font is not that funky. Like what we're doing to it is, right? And the nice thing is we could always go in there because really what needs to happen is this needs to be punched up. Right, we stole this off the site. We thought this was a good font. Maybe it's not the right font. Personally, I think this all needs to be much more bold, right? So again, jumping into Poppins, good thing for good old Poppins, right? Uh, we can jump down in here to extra bold and really thicken that up. And that's just gonna, it's really gonna help our effects stand out a lot in this case. Shrink this down like so. Okay, swapped out the font. I think it's always fun when like text melts together. So we could have the, the TH like that, summer coming, cutting up into it. And uh, we can save this and even have that open up kind of on the side. Uh, there we go. This is much better, much better. Going back, wait for it. Dangerous stuff. I really shouldn't be doing this at print resolution. Not, so, not for this live stream. It's taking a little bit too long watching these progress bars. Hopefully we can change that for our next poster because you know me, we're gonna do a couple different things. This is just ID, idea number one, right? Okay, good. Michelle, we, get a, we got another vote for uh, you like it when it melts together. Perfect. Sort of that idea, right? Again. Usually what I do at this point is I, I accidentally typically like misspell the band's name or the client's name or do all the wrong things because that happens. Because letters start work looking weird. Do you guys ever do that? You're like, you'll stare at something and you're like, this looks weird. Um, yeah, it's because like they're no longer um, really letters as much as they are like design elements, right? Okay, let's move on. I wanna get into something even more fun. Yes, exactly. Co Cody, I, honestly, I knew, I knew it when I started this. I was like, yeah, this needs to be a thicker font, like for sure. Okay. I 
Ah, you only misspell tattoos. Only when it's a permanent thing do you misspell, because the pressure, the stakes are too high. It's just too scary. It's like, whoa, I don't know. When the stakes are high, that's when you misspell. Uh, let's do something else now. This is what I want to do. I want to jump in, and uh, maybe we will use, I agree, the thicker text is awesome. Um, I kind of want to change all of this right now, so wait for it. But we can think about this text in some different ways. So we've used effects, but there's actually layer effects over here. So we've done stuff up here already. We'll go over here and say, hey, what can we do um, with these different lines? In fact, let's just focus on dangerous right now. We'll double click. And uh, from here, we can do a number of things. So I can go in and add just a drop shadow. For this drop shadow, it's going to be um, maybe yellow, doesn't matter, sure, green. We're going to go with like not, um, not primary colors, right? Um, we're going to add this drop shadow. We're going to make sure this is set to normal. And uh, we're going to make sure it's offset enough and cranked up enough. So we did this once, we could, we could just give it like uh, 120 degree angles. We could do, the distance could be uh, 15, for instance. Or just to make this easier on me, I'm gonna do 20. Okay, increments of 20. So we have that one drop shadow, boom, we'll add another drop shadow. For the second drop shadow, this one will be pink, and we'll offset this one, 40, boom. Right, so we could start to stack this up. I've done this before here, by the way. This is this is only the beginning of something awesome. But I like how you can go through and you can add, sure, layer styles, one on top of the next, as I'm doing right now, and uh, hopefully get something cool. Again, kind of going with those vibrant colors, adding another, you get the idea. So working this way, you know, you're gonna, you, you wanna only do this once, by the way. I've already done this. I already have this layer style set up, right? Oh, did I actually offset this one? Wait for it. 80. There it is. Uh, 100, right? Let's change that color. So, um, uh, so I already have an effect that I'm just gonna, I can, can like, can continue to, to use, okay? All right. So maybe this is working for you. Maybe what we want to do, maybe we'll do a, not a color overlay, but a gradient overlay. With a fun gradient. And again, I just want it to be nice and soft. Okay, so this is this is kind of how this is looking. Like, it is okay. Can we all just agree this is all right? Like, it could be much better. Because what's happening here is I'm getting more... This actually is not the band at all. Like, if we look at the band... I mean, look at that banner. Okay, we're all adults, but this gives you an idea of like their music and even like some of their art. This is awfully trippy, right? They're, they're more art alternative. They're not the Bee Gees. This is like Bee Gees style. It could work, but I'm like, eh, it's okay. Um, just so you know, I can go ahead and take that style. I can, I can take this style and uh, drag it to uh, summer and see how summer looks. I can hold down the Alt key, by the way, and drag it up or option key if you're on um, a Mac. So I could do something like this. As you can see, let's reverse the stacking order like that. Right, there we go. And we could still kind of melt all this together and uh, make them touch. Deep. Bop. It's like, no, this is not dangerous summer, right? Can we all agree? 
Oh, Colby, uh, you actually know these guys? Like, I've never heard of them till recently. I actually think they are, they started out in the East Coast. I think they were really big in, like, Baltimore, I think. And uh, the the guitarist, like, just moved to Denver, this guy. Zip. So they've been playing a lot of shows here. So that's how I, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm just, I'm not that cool. But there we have that. When we take this, by the way, rotate it. Or do whatever manipulations we want to. Um, the effects will always be at that initial angle. So, right. So there that is. That's not bad. It's better, larger. But typically when I do this, I'll take this and I'll save the effect. Bingo. We're going to save this the dangerous, the dangerous style. Oh, it's so dangerous. And there it is, stacked like so. Like I said, I've made this before. Here's an earlier one. Uh, and then I have a, there's a lot more going on in here as well. All right. Let's take it to the next level. You ready? Um, a transparent plant? The dangerous summer. Let's let's have some more fun with this again, because this is not this is giving me BG vibes and it's not working. Right? But again, we'll group that and we'll call this uh you know uh design two, right? So we have design one, design two, and now we're gonna go into design three, which is my favorite look that I'm that I'm aiming for, just so you know. So command G, we'll put that in a group, we'll call that design one, and there we have that. Design one, two, and three. I'm going to do something a little bit different. We'll just add a new layer. And because uh, I want to do something along the lines of using effects, right? But uh, also like using a brush. So we'll just grab a, I don't know, a purple brush. Who knows? Who knows these days? We'll see what works. Um, but again, here's... A brush. So basically I would do some hand lettering. Considering doing some hand lettering with this in Photoshop, you can see I just straight up used a brush, right? We take this and uh, we could start doing some really interesting, and, and let me let me actually write a, a, a couple, this is what I would do. Let's delete this. We'll just do D-A-N or something like that. We won't do the whole fact. Let's jump in here. Let's do a uh, soft round pressure size. Okay, there we go. D. Dan. This is for Dan. Are there any Dans out there? But here I have this. Now I can jump in and we could have so many cool effects on this text. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, you know, again, we added the drop shadow, right? They're all right here. Right there they are. We could kind of stack those up. You could hardly even tell the difference. That might be uh, something to try. Uh, what I think is interesting is using like sort of bevel and emboss. Uh, it looks like I already have some of this. I've already done this effect in preparation for today. Um, but again, taking this inner bevel, smooth, right? Um, we could adjust the depth of it. But what we basically have here, we have this inner bevel. And what's interesting, let me turn off some of this stuff since it already kind of got set up, right? Let's just turn that off. Let's just get this back to, because yours isn't going to look like this automatically. So I feel like I'm cheating and I'm sorry. Um, so right in here we have sort of the depth, and right down here, highlights. Typically, what do you do with a highlight? You'll, you'll throw white in there and you'll do shadow. Oh, that's gonna be black, right? This, it's not bad. Um, it still looks kind of like lame, right? Um, I should be able to move this around, aren't I? And uh, let's take a look at this. 
down here, that's all I did. As I went in, I said, hey, you know, what? let's let's change that. We're going with those same vibrant colors that we're working it. They're not primary. They're more like tertiary colors, right? We'll just do that like pink, for instance. Uh, and this is what gets really cool too, is jumping down here and playing with these different blend modes in here as well. So we could change the shadow mode. Remember, it's casting that shadow, which is where we get that pink. And what we're saying, hey, you know what? Take that and, uh, you know, like change that to say like difference, for instance, right? And maybe I'll shift this a little bit more into the, there we go. Cause I want green, something like that. Now let's glit in, get into the contour. As you play with this contour, watch how much of this is going to start to change. Um, taking this down, kind of sloped like so. Right, you start to get this like uh, additional bevel, right? Because what did I do earlier? I, I stacked so many drop shadows, one on top of the next, to make this... Um, you know, this bevel basically. And what I'm doing now is by adding contours, I'm getting like multiple steps. So if I did this, I could go up and down and up and down and you get this like crazy cool look and now it's looking dangerous. All right, so that's what I'm going for. Um, Bruce is in the house, wanna welcome Bruce. Bruce Gonzalez is here, says happy Friday, good to see you. Right, so again, play with those contours. And there's additional contours in here as well. Those are the same ones, by the way, as we click OK, uh, as the ones that are right here. So visually, you can kind of see what's what, right? So we have the cone inverted, rolling slope. I was kind of doing a double ring is what this was, right? And uh, again, this is just a place to start. I can also add additional contours to that as well. So watch as it is somewhat extreme, it gets really extreme as I add this additional contour, all right? Um, in fact, I'll just go in and change that, like something like that. Uh, so you can pick a preset sort of like out of the box and then start to manipulate it yourself, kind of like I'm doing. I'm like, okay, I kind of want to slope, but I want it to be, to have a little bit more difference. All right, so. Uh, that's done. That's okay. It's not that dangerous. It, it kind of looks like acid. Can we all agree? Right? But a little bit more metal. Ooh, Frank um, suggests some grain, which would be interesting. Right? Um, so I could take this effect, just like we did before. We can go ahead and save it. We can call this toxic. Toxic danger. Right? And there that is. Boy, that look, does not look good. I've already like done this as well. So let's go ahead and click on this preset one that I have. Uh, maybe this one. Maybe we'll even change the color a little bit. Because it's actually interacting. As I change the background, uh, excuse me, as I change the text color, Right, obviously it starts to look better. So all I'm doing is changing the uh, color of this, of my element, my DAN, right? And this already is looking better. Can we, can we agree, right? So it's getting a little cool, it's, it's getting a little more cool. Um, even as I scale it down, watch what happens. Like I'll scale this down still looks pretty good, but I could start sort of writing in, and this is what I do a lot. I, I typically like write on different layers, parts of the word, just so I can move them around with different, um, you know, just gives me more flexibility. So B for brush, standard brush, we'll make it a little smaller. Right, and check this out. We'll go over here, we'll have some fun with this. We'll take this, Option, click and drag, boom, right? Changes like so. Uh, you could turn off the effects as well, right? So you could see the difference is uh, one is purple and one is blue. So what do we do? We'll jump in and we'll just make sure this is that same blue color. Because that's actually, actually kind of what I want to paint with is this blue color. But anyways, just showing you how you can kind of 
drag and drop the effects, and then start sort of painting with this. And I need so much more room. I think it's still legible, but let's go ahead and G, uh, B for brush. E, ugh, see it's kind of melting together, ugh, G, Z, ugh, R. That's okay. Don't mind me, let me just like adjust this guy. Take that, move it down. Let's continue to work. In fact, let's do this on another layer. Boom, new layer with the effect, option dragging. Oop. There we go, option drag. On this new layer that I haven't written on, but let's just do B for brush, draw our O. Maybe make this a little bit thicker, actually. There we go, this is much better. I like the thickness of this and I feel like starting all over. Yeah, that happens. D, 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 A, N. Just like we liked the, the bolder font, we uh, kind of like the bolder, uh, bolder text here as well. G-E-R. Oh. What style of S do we want? Oops. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks to Danger is, is his middle name. Ah. S, oh, come on. Let's do this. Let's get in on this. No. I like this. I like it when it gets distorted like that. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, dangerous. Okay. Now let's put it all together. Again, this is very large. So let's take all of this and shrink it down. Why is my file size so big? Because we are making a music poster. Might want to print this out someday. We're working in Photoshop.
dangerous. Um, yeah, so the effects are fun. I like, uh, I like applying the effects and, uh, and then, and then you start like, uh, doing your hand lettering. It's kind of fun to do it that way. It's just, it's just fun to see it come alive. So there we are. Dangerous summer. Uh, you know, and as we look at this, like, w obviously we're going to make plenty of adjustments. Like I have it, I don't even have the in here yet. Um, so I will do that now. Kind of like that. Maybe we'll take this. Remember, if I turn off this effect, like these are the pixels that I'm trying to grab. I might end up with a little bit of a line here, but that's okay. Let's take this. Holding down the command key, we can move that on up. Like so. Turn that back on. No, that doesn't quite work. Don't like it. Okay, let's go back. There we are. Turn that back on. Okay, cool. You guys get the idea. Again, just a different idea, right? We cool? Are we cool, folks? Yeah, turns into, you know, that's the thing. When you say music poster, that really could like mean anything. Like, you know, what, what have we done so far? Let's actually turn these, get rid of these. This is uh, design number three. So we'll group this together. Design three. Yeah, music poster or any fan art, you know, sort of starting out with text. You're like, okay, I'll type that in. Those effects are kind of cool. We did lots of, we have this one as well. Got a little Bee Gees. Just a little, uh, yeah, this is, uh, what would you call this? I don't know. Something. We'd call it something. Uh, but this one is like where we want to go right here. The dangerous summer. Okay. So kind of have this text, by the way, I have, um, let's jump this. All of these are all the, it's, it's all using one effect, even though I have all these different layers. So let's try this. You ready for this? Let's just see what happens. We're going to take all these. We're going to just copy this effect or copy this layer style. We'll just remove. So this is one thing you could do. Check this out. You ready? Let's say, for instance, I want everything on its own layer, but I want to only have one effect that I could change. Well, all you need to do there is just take that effect, drop it on the folder, like so. There it is. And then it processes, it just adds that effect to everything in the folder, All right? So that's just a, a more efficient way to work. But that's usually what happens when you're, when you're, uh, when you're creating, there are no rules. <laughs> like you're, you, you don't have time to be like that efficient when you're creating, right? Cause you're like, oh, I don't even know if this will even work. Like, why would I add it? It actually certainly changed everything in here. Yeah, when, when you're creating, usually you're not being that efficient. You're not naming layers. You're too busy creating, man. All right, so there, there that is. All right, now we have that one effect. We'll double click. Did we save this, by the way? Yeah, that should, it should be this one, but let's double click. Now we can go in and say, hey, you know what? Um, do we play more with this contour, which is going to be the contour for all the letters, uh, currently, we'll just call that custom. So this is the one we initially have, but let's try some of these other ones, right? Look at how it changes that. Tell me that doesn't look like melted ice cream, right? So we have our melted ice cream version, right? The one that we can't, that makes it illegible, right? Some of these illegible would be great if I used it on type. But since we already have such style with the hand lettering, we need to go with something like a little bit more simple like this. 
All right. So there that is. And we could always Command Z to kind of get that back to the original or uh, redo layer style. I kind of like this one's punched up a little bit more. We could save this. There's our new one. And guess what? We have more in here. So I'll just click on some of these that I already kind of like have saved. You know, we have this version, right? Eh, it's okay. What about this one? Yeah, it's all right. I don't know. What do you think? How we doing, everybody? But again, I, I think this is just this is kind of cool because you can get these pretty cool effects um, and use them on hand lettering, right? Use these layer styles on hand lettering, and you can see just this this different look that you get that you maybe wouldn't expect because you you look at these and you're like, oh, these are for buttons, right? No, it's just a bunch of crazy, crazy effects. The problem with any one of these effects is that it's the size of the um, effect matters, right? So when you go in here for each one of these, this, these file, these, the size is all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not relative, but absolute, right? So it's always going to be 191. So, you know, I do need to kind of go in and change that stuff. So anyways, we obviously have our ugly ones. So we have our cooler ones. And um, Let's uh, get this back to where it was. So let me know if you have questions. Where, uh, where's the, uh, oh, where the skull would fit. What are you talking about? Oh, don't get me started. But I think that's a great call, by the way. Great call. So let's just wait for it. I'm rolling back to uh, the first one that... Uh, I selected, let's go back. There's our melted one, something like this. Okay, cool. Let's take this, whatever. Um, here's, um, again, just like another one. Let's just turn this on. You know, here's, again, just like another one I did. And I like this one too, right? This one's kind of fun. But also what these could use, like you said, it needs some added elements. Again, what's what's super cool, I don't know which one you guys like, this one or the other one. Is it legible? I don't know. Right, we can add some additional elements because we're, if we're going to make a movie poster, we need to do more than just, you know, the, the name of the band. So uh, going in here, we can add some, like, additional artwork that's like a burst, right? Some things coming out like so. I'm getting some weird fractals here, but again, just adding some artwork like that, right? So we could do something like that. I did that all on this separate layer, right? But also what I'm thinking, by the way, who said skull, by the way? You're going to be sorry you said that. But also, if we take a look at the band's website as we scroll down, we have this cool eye. So that's that's an element that we might like sneak in there because that's an element for them. Um, you know, again, this this skull as well. So we can think about even using... And I'm, I, I just want to apologize in advance because, you know, I... Um, I didn't have in the description, uh, uh, you know, about using like Dimension or another app. So I, I definitely apologize. Um, but you could use, say, Dimension or Stager or uh, even Illustrator and, you know, create additional elements and, uh, of course, bring those into Photoshop. But when I started looking at this, I was like, oh, this could use like a bubblegum skull, right? Like... Because skull says danger, bubblegum says summertime, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like ice cream, an ice cream skull, sugar skull, like that makes sense for me. Um, so that's why, hey, you know, it's like, hey, let's, let's use Dimension. Um, you could get these skulls for free pretty much everywhere, right? 
where I've gotten skulls, just so you know, and a hu- I'm a huge fan of... Uh, uh, I don't even know how, I don't even know how to say this guy's name, but check this out. Do you guys know um, Bill 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 Ellis? Bill Ellis, is that right? I'm not even sure if that's you say his name correctly. But look at these awesome skulls. So like this is where you have all this stuff. So I think I was kind of thinking of this. I didn't go out and buy this one because I'm like, oh, I could make that right by just adding some lighting. But that's what I was kind of thinking. And luckily, um, he has. I think he usually gives away, like, he's given away free skulls before. But also you could just use a stock.adobe.com, do a search, download those items. Here they are, right here this is. What's the situation right in here? Well, um, that's a good question. It's the environment light is what makes this look unique. So right over here should be uh, the rainbow, right? Uh, let's change this to... Wait for it. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was looking at materials. Sorry about that. We want to go into our lights. So it's just a typical skull, and we could see some of these cool studio lights, studio color stage, right? So we click on this one. We could see it, how it changes those elements. Click on this one. It changes that. What's the situation with this? Guess what? It's just really shiny. All we need to do is render this out and bring that into, um, bring that into Photoshop. So many skulls. Is that wrong? Am I, do I need to, do I need to uh, expand my repertoire of elements? You might be right. But again here, sure enough, Here's our skull. When you render things in dimension, you get these additional layers. It makes it super easy. So you can just go in and say, hey, you know what? Selection layer, basically. So use your magic wand. Selecting that blue allows you to basically select that skull, copy it, you know, bring it into our design. And do something fun with it. Jeez, I am running out of time. I hate it when that happens. Oh, and by the way, what did I do here? I actually pasted it into the um, same folder, right? And inside of th this folder basically has all those effects, which is why it looks the way it does, right? So, and again, could work, could work for you, could work against you. There it is, right? I would, of course, play with these colors a lot more, maybe throw some levels on there to increase uh, sort of the contrast, kind of make it match a little bit better, and I would go through that process. Uh, yeah, so anyway. I would play with the blend modes too, right? But ultimately, whatever elements I add... I kind of want to make them just match the current design in some way, shape, or form. Right? Saeed, good to see you. Thanks for joining me out there on uh, YouTube. Afroja, Tom, I see you. Oh, I should have turned on smoothing when I was drawing. That was, yeah, that was... 20 minutes ago, that comment came through, right? Uh, but again, this is like only the beginning. I would probably throw a bunch of materials and flowers and a bunch of summertime things, maybe a burst, you know, around, whoop, make sure we're on the right layer, around, uh, around this, just to give it a, another sort of like layer of depth, right? So that's what I would do. Take this, change this to overlay. And there's more work I need to do. So I'm not quite going to finish this. But keep in mind, we did three designs. We did a lot of work. And I'm pretty proud of us today. I'm proud of you guys. What about a big skull over the poster? Also a great idea. Right? 
You don't have to ask me twice. But we're down to our last minute. I just thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, here's that big skull that would be behind everything. Right? And uh, I just thank you guys for, for hanging out with me on this, this fine Friday. Uh, again, we're going to have a design and a Photoshop masterclass and then a design masterclass. And I got more coming your way. Uh, more live streams I'm going to be doing that I'm super excited about. Uh, so, but this is the design. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Stay tuned. Um, we have uh, Terry White coming up next. And uh, yeah, and don't forget, we also have a Creative Cloud Express live stream uh, as well. So uh, honestly, I don't want you guys to have a dangerous summer. I want you guys to have a safe summer. And honestly, I'm just getting excited uh, the fact that the weather's changing and it's a little bit better uh, here in uh, Colorado, slightly, and then it's going to price snow next week. Thank you so much, uh, Saeed. Hopefully you learned something. Jan, Reaver, Mike, good seeing you all, my friends. Cody Bear, of course, you're awesome. Barbara, you guys stay awesome. I can't wait to get, man, I'm bummed. I don't have another stream today. What am I going to do with myself? I'm going to be creeping in chat. Uh, so yeah, stick around for Terry's stream and uh, all the master classes today. And of course, uh, support Katrina, who's doing her first Creative Cloud Express uh, live stream. So thanks so much, everybody. And we will see you all soon. Bye.